Hey guys, so today I wanted to talk about why the proxy is so good and uh, there's no question like should you use it or not because if you would ask me I would definitely say yes uh, but we're gonna talk about like what's the benefit, what is so good about a proxy and uh, no we won't be doing any configuration or uh, installation like if you are absolutely new to uh, <coughs> sorry to Zabbix and this channel then just uh, look up one of the first videos where we already covered how you can install the proxy or just uh, type in the search of the YouTube Zabbix proxy installation or configuration and I'm sure you will find my video um, so uh, the greatest greatest benefits and advantages of the proxy like um, lately I've talked a lot about uh, performance issues benefits uh, solutions uh, so how you can solve the problems uh, also in the patreon post so now it's time for uh, for the YouTube and the main thing why first of all the proxies are free right uh, there's no limitation about them you can install one proxy you can have 10 proxies or even 100 or even 1000 proxies there's like nothing bad about it and uh, when we talk about a proxy yes of course it is like a separate machine in your environment so instead of having one simple Zabbix server that you need to maintain you would also have additional servers with proxies so th the main benefits are like in terms of the performance uh, think about when you're creating an items I already have some previous videos hosts so you should always choose a type of the item and when we talk about the type of the item I will also bring a CLI here so we could run control s p s x grab zabbix server see there's like a lot of the processes and this is absolutely default installation so not that many like in the production you might have uh, something around two three hundred of these processes and if we would just look on the names we have a configuration sinker housekeeper timer history sinker proxy polar uh, simple polar trapper trapper and reachable and each of those processes is responsible for some kind of the checks right so if we use as abix agent active then this guy will be responsible to uh, collect the data for that item if we choose let's say um zabbix agent active then we will be talking about the trapper because the agent will be uh, sending the values to the trapper uh, as example unreachable polars this which is only one by default see these four availabilities on the host zabbix for the zabbix agent passive snmp jmx ipmi when this becomes red so some items are not supported for a long time and a host interface becomes not available red then those items are continually rechecked but by unreachable polar just to offload the regular collectors but story is not about that so when we talk about the performance i have a beautiful paint and it'll be a drawings here so let's say we have a zabbix server let me make it bigger we have a zabbix server which is monitoring host one and doesn't matter which uh, which item type we have may be the Zabbix agent uh, passive when we are polling the agent on the host or it could be a SNMP v2 again collecting some information from host or a SNMP v3 uh, all of these checks are taking some time and uh, yeah like initially you of course can run a Zabbix get uh, add a time prefix in front so like this uh, clean this Zabbix get IP of the agent uh, minus key let's say system.cp load I will add time in front and we're talking about 0 0.004 seconds if we would take something more complicated let's say let's take my windows agent which will be this and let's take uh, process discovery 
Uh, what was the process? Service discovery. Service discovery. There we go. So this took 0 0.3 seconds. You see there's actually a big difference. And uh, it, on a quick look, this might not seem um, anything worth to even look on. So this was 0 0.004, this was 0 0.3. So it's not even a second, right? And it seems quite a quick, so let's take it 0 0.3. But uh, we're talking about like very massive installation and this Avex is very scalable and uh, suited for the big installation where we're talking about thousands, hundreds of thousands of hosts and also the items and we're talking, remember the main metric inside is Avex is NBPS which is a new values per second and let's say some kind of average this Avex installation would be 5000 NBP S, so new values per second. So think about how much time we have for each of these 5,000 checks in a second to collect the data. It's definitely 0, .0 something, right? And uh, each of these item types are also different. It's not like uh, Zabbix agent will be exactly the same speed or, or the same fast as is an MPV1, V2, V3. Uh, we can easily compare them. Like as an MPV1 will be much quicker than V2, V3. Uh, V2 will be quicker than V3 and V3 will be the, the slowest one. But in terms of securities, like many people are choosing as an mpv3 uh, what else some kind of external checks so our custom scripts or if you have a user parameters on the zabbix agents like it's very good to have them but they will be definitely much slower than any built-in check um, what else simple check also so any item that you create uh, these internal processes that i had here uh, each of them is spending some amount of the time, like 0 0.3 seconds, to collect the data. And if we set, let's say, I will clean, clean this. So if we have um, 1, uh, 2, and let's say 1,000 Windows hosts, right? So some, uh, some more, 1 thousand and on each of them we're monitoring windows service discovery which in our uh, local host so we're not even talking about some network slowliness uh, took around 0 0.3 seconds so multiply all of that with 1000 hosts uh, think how many polars you have by default of course you can increase them up to 1000 if I'm not wrong uh, but so how much time will be dedicated only for this service discovery? So how much time the polars will be simply waiting when they will receive the value? And that applies to all the items. Okay, so uh, I guess that's the time when we talk about the proxy. Like uh, you should already know that the proxy has a great benefit of uh, it has also a database so it can store the data if you have uh, some network communication issues between the Zabbix server and the proxy. Uh, proxy is like the first thing why you should use it for remote man monitoring so if you have some different branches, different cities, different offices uh, you will have to install the proxy. If you have some virtual networks which are not accessible by the Zabbix server you will have to install the proxy and you can always choose also the method of communication so it can be active or passive so you're kind of decide how it will be working but what's the hidden uh, and one of the greatest benefits of the proxy is that you are actually offloading Zabbix server so proxy uh, I can even install it quickly I don't know if I have it uh, Zabbix, I do have it. So uh, there's default config of the Zabbix proxy and you see that um, it actually has the same processes as Zabbix server. So also the polars, uh, unreachable polars, preprocessors, uh, 
trappers same processes as for the Zabbix server also the same caches and what's the benefits so we have servers uh, we have a hosts let's say those will be 1000 hosts again on which we want to monitor these uh, Windows services which are taking a big amount of the time and we are putting a big load on the Zabbix server so the exit from this problem is a proxy proxy has the same processes proxy will be collecting all this information from our 1000 hosts exactly the proxy pullers will be waiting those uh, 0.3 seconds on each of the hosts to collect the data and then when data is collected proxy will send already collected data so you can um, you can take out from the calculation all the time needed um, like here for the connection for waiting when the host will respond this all goes out so proxy just sends a raw values to the Zabbix server and on the Zabbix server side uh, none of the processes will be busy trying to connect to the host and uh, get the data uh, what also new happens starting from a version 4.2 so before 4.2 the proxy was responsible just collect the data from the hosts and pass it to the server that's it so then server is responsible to do all the pre-processing steps calculate triggers send actions and notifications execute remote commands and store the data inside the database and uh, if we would um, let's say easily tell the things that are most costing the performance inside a Zabbix. Uh, first is triggers, then I would say um, pre-processing and all the analyzing of the data, and then uh, yeah, the checks themselves, so collecting the data. And starting from 4.2, this part, the pre-processing, is also on the proxy side so anytime when you have those items and even if you don't know the, know it actually you have a lot of them even the default ones so let's take a discovery rules for network interface uh, discovery see how many item prototypes there are just inbound packets pre-processing you see change per second and this pre-processing bro right now is happening on the Zabbix server so Zabbix server internal processes are responsible to calculate this what else do we have inbound packets with errors bits sent change per second and also a custom multiplier so Zabbix server internal process is responsible to apply this then multiply it with eight and you can have much more of them these are just the default ones and right now when the pre-processing is so powerful I'm sure that you have much more as example like the regular expressions uh, JavaScript XML XPath JSON pass which is also very powerful in the newest releases um, simple change change per second and all of these so all of these are also taking the resources of your Zabbix server and starting from 4.2 so what we have we have a server then server sends a config to the proxy and a proxy is responsible to collect uh, data from the host so then proxy gets this data and proxy sends already collected data to the server and uh, what else happens here is pre-processing so pre-processing is also happening on the proxy side so what is left for the server collect data process triggers execute actions right that's the most most important things so on the proxies we putting all the load for the data collection and for let's say more slower checks like a synop v3 v3 external checks user parameters instead of putting load on the zabbix server we're putting that on the proxies when we have a lot of pre-processing steps again we're offloading server and putting all of that on the proxies but <coughs> so you don't get me wrong it's not 
a mandatory thing. I am not saying that Zabbix server is uh, not powerful enough to um, do all of that on his own. Like uh, you can easily have one single Zabbix server installation uh, with thousands of items, thousands of hosts collecting all of your data without any proxy. But if you are minimaxing and you want to get the best out of the performance, let's say you don't want to ex um, invest extra money in the specification of your Zabbix server, like the memory on the CPU, uh, before uh, you won't get the most possible performance out of the same hardware. So you can tune your configuration, you can tune the database, you can check the update intervals, uh, uh, follow all the performance uh, suggestions and the best practices I also shared in my, in my Patreon page. And you can also install the proxies, like um, yeah, I'm talking about the hardware, but it's not like you need to deploy very powerful proxies. Separating them, let's say, uh, in two cores, four gigs, such proxy will also be able to process quite a lot of data and offload the server heavily. So if you're planning on really high numbers, and I am saying uh, probably 10k plus NVPS, so new values per second, not the amount of the host, not the amount of the items, new values per second, and to check them, you can go to the monitoring graphs, uh, select your Zabbix server host, I actually don't have uh, the template linked here, but uh, the template comes from app Zabbix server, uh, Zabbix server graphs, Zabbix server performance. So this one, number of processed values per second, this metric will be actual amount of values processed by your Zabbix server. And if you want to get the most out of the Zabbix uh, before investing in some other directions, I really recommend you to use the proxies use them wherever it is possible, uh, move all the checks from the Zabbix server to the proxies and you will definitely see a difference. Like it's not even a secret, um, there are a lot of Zabbix users that are monitoring thousands, thousands of hosts and items and all of the items, absolutely all of them are running from the proxies. So they have thousands of the items and none of them is collected directly by the Zabbix server. So in the end, it looks like uh, they have a server and then just thousands, thousands of the proxies uh, might be in the same company, might be in a different cities, different countries, uh, virtual networks, whatever, and all of them are connected to the Zabbix server. So Zabbix server is responsible only to pass the actual configuration. And then these guys are um, responsible to do the monitoring, right? To collect the data from the hosts, uh, do the pre-processing on versions starting from 4.2 and just pass the values to the Zabbix server for uh, analyzing the triggers and sending the alerts, plus uh, storing the data in the database. So, uh, yeah, that's probably it for this video, and I do apologize for my silly drawings. I hope that you, you got the main point about it. So, proxies are good. Uh, you should use proxies, and uh, not only because of those most uh, known reasons, like for distributed monitoring and uh, having a database in case of the downtime of the network. So there is much more behind them, uh, much more benefits, and I do recommend to use the proxies whenever you can. Um, if still have any questions about how that works, uh, or you're still not sure why you should use the proxies, then just post in the comments, ask your questions or share your feedback, and uh, click subscribe, click like buttons, and we'll definitely see you in the next videos. Thank you guys, and see you later.